Welcome here on the table. I am Axel Verstraal and I am an ICD patient. And I welcome uh, Francesco Acosta here on the table and he is a cardiologist. So the good thing is I can ask you questions about, in my case, sudden cardiac death. So how can I, um, can I detect or prevent the threat of sudden cardiac death? Well, Axel, to be honest, there are lots of things we can do. The causes of sudden cardiac death vary across the age group of patients or, or population. So most often when sudden cardiac death occurs before the fourth decade of life, it is related to inherited conditions like uh, genetic uh, diseases, canalopathies uh, or cardiomyopathies. But after the fourth decade of life, there is a transition and most often sudden cardiac death is related to coronary artery disease. Well, the most frequent uh, epidemiological age group of sudden cardiac death is above this age cutoff. So most sudden cardiac deaths in real life occur in older individuals. And the good news is that most often it is related to coronary artery disease. That is often also related to, uh, to coronary artery disease risk factors. So things you can control in life. So I'm, I'm meaning specifically having a healthy lifestyle, not non-smoking, health, healthy diet, regular exercise, control your uh, blood pressure, diabetes, overweight, etc. So these conventional, traditional risk factors for cardiovascular disease are also the risk factors you should treat and prevent to decrease the risk of sudden cardiac death after the fourth to fifth decade of life. So that, that's a lot of things we can do. What about alcohol? Alcohol, yes, if, if in excess is also a, a risk factor for cardiovascular Drugs. disease, of course. Drugs, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So consider having a healthy lifestyle to prevent cardiovascular disease. This will also reduce the likelihood of sudden cardiac death after the fifth decade of life. Okay. And what if sudden cardiac death runs into the family? So if you ever... What do, we, what do we need to do then? Yeah. If you have a close relative that suffers from sudden cardiac death or had a sudden cardiac death, efforts should be made to detect the exact cause of the, of, the, of the incident because often we can detect the reason for the event and if we detect the reason for the event, for example, if you detect a canalopathy, a specific disease on uh, your family relative, and it's, if it is a genetic disease, then we can screen the relatives, the first degree relatives, to try to identify that same disease and to see if you are in risk or not. So it is always relevant to try to identify the reason for the event in your relative, if that happens in your family. So we can screen the, the first degree relatives and advise upon risk uh, reduction strategies. So that's very relevant. Yeah, and it sounds like an adventure for all the family. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always wondering what should I have to do when I witness, when I'm a witness to uh, a sudden, a sudden cardiac death? Often that is I mean, quite, a, quite an impressive event. Shocking people tend to be to be stressing and difficult to react. But that's some things that to everyone in real life should be able to do. And and I think that should be also be teaching into the school so everyone can act uh, in a likely manner. So. The relevant things to do when you see someone fighting or passing out or when you find someone that is not reacting is first of all to approach the individual and to check if he has a pulse. If there is no pulse, you need to call for help and to immediately initiate cardiopulmonary resuscitation, basic uh, life support until someone arrives. Also, if you have help and if there is an automatic defibrillator in the area, efforts should be made to to rapidly uh, approach the, the defibrillator to check if there is a defibrillated rhythm that you can save the patient. So everyone should know how to identify a pulse, how to call for help, and how to initiate yes. cardiovascular, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That should be something that everyone should be able to do. It sounds not that difficult, but <laughs> on the other hand, you save lives with that. And you need to train. Yeah. But or else you get nervous and then it doesn't go properly. Yeah, I can imagine that. So, But you can save lives, so it is yeah, something that's, that's worth investing. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to learn it. So I can do it when you are. So thank you, thank you for Axel. this uh, introduction in studying cardiac death.